unravel the sock blank in real time. I always recommend uh, unraveling a couple of rows from the blank before you get things started, just so that way you know that you're unraveling from the right end. Then we can turn the machine on. Uh, it can go faster than this, but I like to keep a very close eye on the blank because if it snags and there's too much tension, then that could snap the yarn, which isn't as much of an issue with a sock yarn like this one that is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. Now you'll see I'm winding two skeins from this blank. Uh, this blank was double stranded, which means that there were two strands, two 50 gram balls of yarn that were held together and knit uh, to create this blank that I then dyed in this sort of repeating gradient kind of motif. Now we are approaching the end, so I am going to slow things down uh, just so that way I can get the last little bit done. But this is way faster than doing it by hand. Now, there are certainly pluses to doing this by hand. I'm going to come and start tying on these ends. Uh, if I do it by hand, you can see the repeating gradient a little better, but you can still get a sense of how the light to dark sections will end up based on how the blank looked originally, which is why even if I've unraveled the blanks, I always try to include a shot of the dyed blank in with the listing photo because that helps people understand how the yarn will work up. Now, when you re-knit the yarn, if I had painted a design on it, you're not going to replicate that design in the finished project, but with an abstract colorway like this, it's a little easier to imagine how that could work up. Removing the yarn from the Nitty Knotty, there's crimp in it based on the way that the knit stitches were wet and then dried off in position but it's really easy to relax that crimp a little bit for a customer with soaking the yarn and letting it dry again and ship this off to the customer who bought the blank and wanted me to unravel it for them. 